Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. I just completed an event that is held once a year for Stampin' Up! demonstrators. It is called On Stage. Sometimes it's in real life, but in the last couple of years with COVID, it has been uh, called On Stage at Home, and it happens virtually, which is perfect for me since I travel all the time and love to do everything online. And I want to share cards that I made during the session that it was called Stamp and Share. We received instructions for supplies. They gave suggestions if we didn't have the supplies that the presenter was going to have, and I did not have those supplies. So the day before, I made enough materials for three projects. None of them are exactly like the ones created but I just wanted to actually be crafting with them. So I did on the first card use a technique that was being demoed, and so that was fun. The second card uses a technique that I just saw Libby use last weekend. It's kind of like an old school technique, but you know how all of the those older techniques come full circle and they always come back in, in fashion again, and I really liked what she did. So I will share that with you as well. And I did not make the third project because I always tend to make more elaborate, avid projects, and I only got two done. And I stole some of the materials between the second project and the third. I kind of combined them because I, I ended up making it fancier. So the first project is using a stamp and die set that has been around for a while. It is Celebrate Sunflowers. And I used the dies that make the big sunflower because the first card project had a large floral element and I just picked this as my large floral element. Made some copper uh, sprigs and the copper center of the flower and then cut a couple of leaves. So I will bring out the project. I am standing right now because I sat all day. So it is time to stand. And this is the project. And you can see that it has the torn edges. Uh, and you know, when you watch these, um, you're, you're watching a lot of stamping and a lot of creating. And of course you see people making uh, projects that use techniques that you love and the tearing of the paper I love. So I did that first. Then I took and did some, just some sponging to grunge up this really nice busy pattern so that it ended up not looking so shiny and new so it goes better with the tearing. I then saw the presenter showing a really easy way to color their floral and I thought, you know, I can in incorporate that same technique a little bit different because I have this large yellow background, but it was pretty darn bright. So her technique was using sponge daubers to color just really casually, you know, not worrying about staying in the lines. And in this case, all I needed to do when I did my sponging is I eyeballed where this circle die was going to be. And I started in the center and flicked outward with my sponging so that you end up with just a soft effect of the blue. And then I also added a little bit of the blue. You can even see it here um, on the edges. I purposefully only adhered the center of this flower because I did want it to have a little bit of a, of a separated uh, look. I did not want it to be all tightened down. So I left the edges unglued. I then used the um, a stamp from the Quiet Meadow stamp set. It's the splatter. It's a really good splatter. If you're looking for a good natural splatter that looks like paint droplets, this splatter is my favorite. There's a different splatter in the poppies and there's yet another splatter fairly close by here that I considered using, but I decided not to. And it is 
this little splatter that's in Forever Fern. So I ended up using my favorite splatter. So I ended up cutting out the Celebrate You. I took from this uh, particular Harvest Meadow DSP, which I had out. I, I was kind of looking for things that just were quick. I had them out. So I grabbed that pack. I found this busy pattern and I also used the On the yellow side, I was looking at these three yellows to be t torn for below the Let's Celebrate You, and I picked this one with the little white crosses because I knew I was going to have the white sentiment. For the trim, I used the fine art trim that has little flecks of gold, and the little flecks of gold are different than the copper, but it is so subtle you can't really tell that they don't match. And I finished it off with a brand new uh, pre-release. Oh, I guess everybody can get them now because we're after the first of the month. The first of November, you could, you can buy the pieces of this pre-release Eden Suite, and it's called Garden Gems. So I used one of the cat's eye looking or marquee, and then two of the the round ones to finish it off. I really like this one. And then the second project, like I said, I had cut materials and I put them in little baggies for all three projects. I was very organized. Uh, but when I got going, I realized that I was going to end up, it took too long on the first one. So that ended up giving me the opportunity to break out the next two sets and combine all of the materials to come up with a card that would go with my three twine ribbon strategy that I took from Libby. And thank you, Libby, for inspiring me to use your idea. The three colors, if you look at the paper, I did use the hand penned DSP and here's a chunk of it. Um, one side is just a, a color in white in a pattern. And the other side has a variety of floral penned with black. So I picked one and then I also, you can see I cut out these flowers come with the hand penned bundle. So I cut out these floral elements. I also did the leaves, but I ended up doing something different. I uh, cut sprigs using the Quiet Meadow dies. So I grabbed for my purposes, I grabbed this one and I cut this twice in garden green. I actually started with this die for the sentiment, but you'll see that I ended up doing something a little bit different with the sentiment. So the second one I found that I needed to, I had to cut down the amount of the hand penned DSP so that my solid colored green sprigs that I cut that were pretty large uh, could be seen, easily seen. And I used the Stitched So Sweetly for the label. Like I said, I didn't use that skinnier label. I really want, liked this Wishing You a Wonderful Birthday. And here is my three up bow, all three bunny ears. It was big and thick when I cut, I mean, when I did the bunny ears to make the bow. And then for behind the sentiment, I used the full gingham. This is the gingham cut in half. Here is the other half. I already wanted to use the pale papaya because it coordinates with these flowers and I didn't want the green to be the same weight. So remember that as a trick, you can always cut uh, your trim down and it kind of gives it a natural uh, homemade look to it when you have some fringes and, and some extra bits of um, fibers sticking off but you can see here that the pale papaya and the green are the same width so to give me a variety 
I used, you can see that this is a skinnier piece than the thickness of that gingham. So that worked perfectly. And now I have another half of the gingham still ready to go. I can set this aside in my stash to use for something else. I used the brushed metallic silver that's new in the holiday catalog and just put two little pieces to help uh, brighten up the wishing you a wonderful birthday. And that wishing you a wonderful birthday comes from Elegantly Said, which I bought for the sentiments, although I have seen some really cute uses of the uh, graphical elements as well. And I did know that I wanted this to be a more formal fancy card. There's the hand penned gems that I bought that coordinate. They are a sparkly gem that again looks like Wink of Stella and oh, I don't have them in sight. You probably cannot see it. So those gems are sparkly and then I used, which is very rare, but it called for on these projects to use the shimmer white and I used it and I can actually see it kind of looks like somebody did a wash of Wink of Stella on the white. It just sparkles in the light, but it probably isn't something that I can get to transfer on the video, which is too bad, but it is very cute in real life. I used the um, painted texture background, dry embossing folder, and did I say Stitched So Sweetly? Can't remember. So Stitched So Sweetly has a set of scallops and then it has like a set of four kind of interlocking shapes going from small to bigger. And this is like the sec the third biggest one and I, it, I thought it would just show a little bit of the Misty Moonlight as well as set off the silver uh, brushed, which I actually did vertically. So the brushing is vertical. And that completes both of my cards that I made. Again, whenever I go do these events, I mean, I don't get to craft with people very often. So I've been excited to, I went to two classes last month at the Great Outdoors. I get to craft with Libby once a month and then this comes around once a year. And so I always sign up for this and enjoy seeing all the projects. There are just tons of pictures of projects using the next, the January catalog that's coming out as well as the celebration. So I'm already very excited and working on my order and what I'm going to get and what the priority is. And this is like way early for me to have this information. So it's very fun. So I will put all of the supplies used up on my blog. I did not mention any measurements. These are kind of more basic cards, but I will put any interesting measurements. I'll put them on my blog. I think well, the most interesting bit is how, how big did I make the hand penned strip, which actually is, I eyeballed it and just made it slightly larger top and bottom than the blue label layer of which oh yeah on this one I popped up just the white is popped up and it shows that the blue is popped up but it actually isn't it's kind of popped up because of this double layer of twine but I don't actually have it popped up with dimensionals I did pop up these two flowers so both behind each flower is a little piece of dimensional. And on the bottom here, um, I will have to go through and see what I want to do under here because I see that it isn't attached, but the top is. So I will probably be tacking that down to finish it off. Anyhow, you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can leave them here on my video or over on my blog. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.